Welcome to the pregame with Matt and Jax. This is a pregame. I'm Matt. I'm Jax. And we're making our winter transition into basketball, I guess, is the best way to, to kind of do that. Since there's, what, two football games this weekend, yeah. some hockey going on. And, oh, yeah. And mostly. It's it's a full slate of basketball. There's hockey, yeah, obviously. But, I mean, yeah, there's with college and, and the pros, we got it full swing now for basketball. Yeah, I'm mostly into college basketball, so that's really all I care about. Sure. I mean, I've been. Uh, I had peak sports fandom over the weekend uh i sent you a snap of it whenever i was sitting oh yeah at, you had at, double tvs going on and everything yeah. it, was, it was like you had your own bar at your house yeah yeah i mean a brand new house you know everything's disheveled so it, it made it easy to put two tvs <laughs> but, up but that was a priority that <laughs> yeah. was the priority yeah. <laughs> nothing else is put up. we have laundry <laughs> everywhere it's uh, just a complete mess but damn it i got to watch two sports games at once so that's that's all i really care about yep. But yeah, we'll also uh, continue with our latest uh, and greatest new segment, New Coach Who Dis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, right now, why don't we go ahead and get in with the uh, the, the matchups sure. for this week. In the NFL, we have what I think will lead to Brady meeting and beating the Bills in the Super Bowl, because that's what it's like to be a Bills fan, I'm Boy, pretty sure. Boy, he needs sure. a new team to beat in the Super Bowl, too. Yeah. <laughs> and first off, the pack uh, takes on the Tampa Bay Bradys. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's not a lot to discuss here. It's going to be a great game. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady, are you kidding me, in a conference championship game? Couldn't ask for anything more than that. I look for it to be high scoring. I think it's going to be high scoring as well. I, I would expect it to be a you know 30-something, a 30-something game. And it's going to be a close game, too, I, I think. The Chiefs are taking on the Bills. It's going to be interesting. Uh, it all really lays on Patrick Mahomes' health. It really does. Uh, uh, they sort of, as of today... He isn't showing any concussion system symptoms. He's practicing in full today. So, um, as far as I know, it's looking good for him to play. It's looking good, and let's hope that he doesn't have any residual uh, injuries kind of left right, over. Because, right. I mean, his, his neck got jacked. Sure, and concussion symptoms, they, they can linger, and they can take a few days to show as, as they're, they're learning over the past few seasons. All right, moving to college basketball, we have West Virginia taking on Texas Tech as number 14 versus 12, I believe. Mm-hmm. And that's happening on Monday, which should help shape what is a very good Big 12 conference. Very good Big 12 conference. Yes, it is. And, and uh, I, I'm excited for that one, too. Hope, hopefully it happens. Texas Tech's last game got ended up getting postponed. The Mountaineers almost uh, knocked off Texas last weekend or the weekend before, I believe, mm-hmm. but came up short. Then Texas Tech came pretty close last weekend. So it's, I mean, you can't you can't sleep on any team that's coached by Chris Beard. He's a phenomenal coach. You saw these guys in the national championship just two years ago. So uh, it's going to be a great one. It's like the measuring stick in the Big Twelve is Texas, Kansas, then West Virginia and Texas Tech. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what it looks like right now. And it's very weird because for so long the Big Twelve didn't really have a big basketball presence. Yeah, it, it, was, it was Kansas it was, and a bunch of. It was dudes. almost Kansas and maybe one other team to emerge as a contender that year, and that was it. So it, with Shaka Smart coming there and everybody mm-hmm. just kind of making their way to the Big 12, they were like, hey, we can win basketball games and right. recruit here. Yeah. So <laughs> why don't we go ahead and do that? And it's kind of awesome. Uh, new Coach Who Dis, our new uh, new segment. Yes. We the, still need theme music for it. But. Yeah, we do. But uh, Starting with the Jets, they found their guy. They went with the uh, defensive route with uh, – uh, Robert Soleil. Am I saying that right? Oh, yeah, 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 Soleil. Yeah. I'm sure you're happy he's out of San Francisco. I am indeed. <laughs> yes. yes, that was, uh, yeah, thank you, Jets. Uh, they'll just need someone to run their offense now. Yeah, uh, that's true. And But, I mean, their offense does have some pieces. They have some young receivers. And, uh, I mean, from what it looks like, they might be sticking with Sam Darnold this year. Yeah, uh, just seeing the reports that they aren't going to go after Trevor Lawrence, which makes more sense for him to go to the Jags now than ever. Sure. Uh, taking a look at the Texans, search uh, is turning them into a giant dumpster fire. Right. Uh, I think, I mean, right now, you know, they were the first ones to fire their coach during the season. Right. And now they're the last ones that, uh, to, to, to have find one. one. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, right now, I, th- I think you're st- you're going wrong if you don't hire Eric Bieniemy. but I haven't heard anything that's saying that he's the leader for it right now. They've also inter- uh, interviewed Leslie Frazier. That could be another way that they could go. A lot of people saying that Jim Caldwell's the guy to fix them, but I don't know about that. Yeah, Jim Caldwell's not fixing anything. Except for his, <laughs> him to be fired in two years, right? Uh, yes. I keep reading Bienemy and Leslie Frazier. Yes, uh, they're the front runners. That's what I keep seeing. Yeah, uh, yeah. As far as I know, they're kind of the top two right now, but they haven't pulled the trigger yet. <laughs> what are they waiting on? That's what that, I'm wondering. That's 
that's also if they want the job. Sure. They that's might true. get stuck with Jim Caldwell just because he's the only one willing to take that job. Right. No kidding. Because, I mean, yeah, the, there's a pay bump, but also longevity. Yeah. 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 The Chargers poached the guy that turned your uh, team into a defensive powerhouse, too. What did I say last podcast? I said, don't sleep on Brandon Staley being an outside chance for to take a head coaching job. And sure enough, Chargers picked him up the day after the Rams lost last week. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, the commute's going to be the same for him, so good for him. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, does, <laughs> he doesn't have to move, so that's nice. Yeah, I guess his parking spot might be different. I but, don't know. But, I mean, yeah. so, solid choice. You saw what he did with the Rams defense this year, and uh, so now uh, look out for the Chargers to be kind of uh, you know and they'll they'll be in and right in games right now since uh, they already got an offense to put up points. Who are the Rams going to take for their defensive coordinators? Have right now, uh, Raheem Morris is the is oh, the leading okay. candidate. He, uh, in fact, him and McVay used to work together in Washington years ago. Uh, so he's he right now he's the leading candidate for that. Yeah, he was also a candidate for a head coaching job too. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, so uh, um, but then again, there's only one <laughs> one spot that's left for that. So yeah, unless he wants to go to college. Yeah. See, the Falcons hired Arthur Smith from the Titans. Matt Ryan mm-hmm. has to be happy about this one. Oh, yeah. a nice offensive guy sure. for him. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, like he's been kind of missing that, so maybe that's something to get, get everything to gel together for them, them for once. <laughs> and Philly was the other dumpster fire, and they they were in no man's land until like 30 minutes ago. Literally like 30 minutes ago, yeah. Because they got Nick Sirianni from uh, the Colts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and... Colts uh, offensive coordinator. It, that uh, job was actually going to be between Sirianni and Josh McDaniels. I can't see Josh McDaniels in Philadelphia. That's a weird fit. But... I couldn't either. I know Deuce Staley was another name that right. they had to run around to, which would be very Which was a fan favorite, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who would want Deuce Staley? Like, he was just such a big back, and he right. was fun to yeah. watch. And, yeah, absolutely. And the pros, but I mean, I don't know how well that translates to there. True. Whether he'll get to stay with Philly either, which they, they'll probably keep him. Sure. Yeah, I would imagine. Deuce Staley, and everybody loves him. Of course. Uh, Josh McDaniels, it seems like that would be weird, considering, you know. It, it just seems like a strange fit. I, it, I don't know. It also it, seems weird because he's not that great without Tom Brady either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just put that out there. Yep. See, the Jags. Him on the lotto with Urban Meyer until you know he quits after a couple of years and goes back to Fox or something. <laughs> right. See, so yeah. Detroit grabbed uh, Dan Campbell. Mm-hmm. He knows some offense from you know his time in Nola, so that of course, should yeah. that should help with Stafford if they keep him. Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> who knows? You've heard some weird trade rumors about quarterbacks. Obviously, there's ones out there with Deshaun Watson, and uh, also Matthew Stafford's been on the trading block. What I think has been like seven years now, or right. something like that. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see what what forms out of Detroit. But who knows? They have some talent, especially some young talent out there that they can make some things happen. All right, let's talk hockey. Uh, I have nothing to add to this because <laughs> I was telling John, I was like, I couldn't name four players. <laughs> is, is Ovechek still in? Is he still in? Yeah, Ovechkin's still playing. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So, Ovechkin? Okay. Ovechkin? It's, it's, it's name, Ovechkin. Right? Alex Ovechkin. <laughs> All right, so here we go. For the NHL, yeah, you know, it's and it's got its first week underway now. Now, because of COVID, it's going to be a 56 game season. It will also be a realignment of the divisions. Uh, now, also on the schedule, each team plays their own opponent twice before moving on to play another team. So I think we'll see a lot of teams right in the thick of it come playoff time just because most of the time it's going to be tough for these teams to win back at back games against their opponent because that's that's just a tough thing to do in, in, in hockey. The defending Stanley Cup champs, Tampa Bay, they would be my top pick in the Central Division. They, they still have a very stacked squad with Steven Stamkos leading them. Uh, far and away, they are the most dominant team in that division. In the East, it's much tougher with Washington, Philadelphia, and uh, Boston. You have, the, I mean, the, the Caps, the Flyers, and the Bruins, and they don't, don't sleep on a young New Jersey team, especially with a talent like Jack Hughes, who just a year ago was the number one pick in the, uh, in the NHL and had a phenomenal rookie year. In the North, Jon Snow is the king. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is I was looking down my phone at the at news about uh, the new Game of Thrones series yeah. like prequel that they're working right. on. Yeah. So I was actually just reading that as you were talking about hockey, <laughs> which it goes back to my uh, That's perfect. No, poor hockey players. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> but yes, Jon Snow is the king. Uh, but no, <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there, but everyone has been uh, patiently waiting for Toronto to emerge as the top contender uh, for the 
the past few years now. And considering they have the likes of Austin Matthews and John Tavares now, they could be the, this could be the year for it. So uh, look for them uh, to be uh, tops in that division. Of course, Montreal and Vancouver are also teams I expect to push them in the North Division. Then in the West, Vegas is probably the most overall stacked team. They went out and cleaned up their defense. They got Alex Petrangelo to beef up uh, their defensemen in the offseason. But the Knights will have, of course, the Colorado Avalanche to contend with, led by Nathan McKinnon and the St. Louis Blues with Ryan O'Reilly. And also look for Jordan Cairo on the Blues to have a breakout year. He's uh, going to be one of their main scorers. To He's going to make a big impact for them. So it's still too soon to make any predictions, really. But at this point, those are the top teams to look out for in each division in the NHL. All right, thanks for that. And that, that kind of uh, replaces your fantasy football <laughs> right. yeah. uh, things that you have to research about now. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, a busy, it's a busy time being Jacks. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, taking a look at the Pickums and betting on, starting with college basketball tonight. Indiana is taking on number 4 Iowa. Iowa's favored by 10. I I think Indiana is done this year. I think yeah. I think Archie Miller's done. He's going to be packing his bags yeah. uh, come March. Yeah, I'm uh, there's, I'm just going to go ahead and take Iowa in this one. I used season's pretty much lost. Number 24 UCLA taking on Cal tonight. UCLA is favored by 9. Going to stick with UCLA. When was the last time Cal was even good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take UCLA. Yes. I'm sure they were within the last 5 years. They were probably ranked <laughs> number 19 for like half a season or right. something. We just didn't pay attention. Yeah. Looking at Friday, number 7 Michigan Taking on Purdue. Gonna yeah, stick with Michigan. I'll go with Michigan as well on that one. Saturday, all kinds of games happening. Number eight, Houston taking on Cincinnati. Houston's gonna win that one. Look at Houston. Yeah, they've kind of showed some staying power within the top ten. I'll take Houston. Cincinnati did not do a great job of having an heir apparent to Mick Cronin. No. And that's their problem. They, right. They didn't really think past what would happen if he left. Right. Which obviously he's doing something because UCLA is number twenty four. That is true. So some sort of impact, but probably just for the wrong squad. Yeah. Oklahoma taking on number nine, Kansas. Kansas should easily blow past I Oklahoma. I expect that very much as well, yes. KU. Pretty good uh, American conference matchup or uh, Big East, excuse me, conference matchup. Number twenty three Yukon taking on number eleven Creighton. Uh, I still think Creighton's gonna win this one, but sure. That Big East, man. It's a lot of good basketball teams in there, too. A lot too. of good basketball teams in there. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna t- right now, I'm going to take Creighton in that one. Number 16, Virginia Tech taking on Syracuse. Syracuse manhandled Mi- Miami after Miami blew up Louisville. So I'm going to go with Syracuse on this one. They, they, I, I noticed that as well. But, uh, you know, Virginia Tech, I think you're going to slow them down. Uh, Virginia Tech's pretty, good, pretty well uh, coached on the defensive side of things. I think they're going to take that one. Number two, Baylor taking on Oklahoma State. Baylor should be able to breeze by that one. Absolutely, yeah. Baylor, hands down. Number 17, Minnesota taking on Maryland. I think uh, Richard Pertino and his uh, his Gophers got that one going. Pertino, man, he just, I mean, every team that he coaches, he has them in the thick of it. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's younger Pertino, not older Pertino. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on to number three, Villanova taking on Providence. Villanova should be able to Villanova, handle easy. them pretty easily. Yes. The one team that's not good in the Big East is uh, Providence. <laughs> right. Sorry for Iron Nation. Uh, number 20, Clemson taking on Florida State. Florida State's going to win this one. They're going to make their way back into the, the top 25. I think they will, too. I think they got a good squad there. So And, uh, yeah, Clemson, I, don't know, I still haven't seen enough from them uh, the, uh, this year. There's no reason that Florida State's not in the top 25. Right, yeah. I, oh, I, it's, I, it's a farce I, for them not to be in there. I completely agree. Number 10, Wisconsin, taking on number 15, Ohio State. I'm going to stick with Wisconsin on that one. I think they're going to beat them out, beat them yeah. up underneath and, yeah, this is and one of those, flop and do everything that Wisconsin does. This is one of those games where, you know, Wisconsin's more, they're more fundamentally sound overall than Ohio State. I, I, I'm going to take Wisconsin. Number 14, West Virginia, taking on Kansas State. I'm going to stick with West by God, Virginia on this one. As will I, yes, West Virginia on this one. Uh, number 24, UCLA taking on Stanford. UCLA going to cruise on this one, too. Yes, absolutely. I think UCLA is going to have a pretty easy time winning the Pac-12, the Pac 12, 13, 14 this I, year. I would think so. How, how tough they'll be outside that once they play other teams outside there, I don't know. But in the Pac-12, yes. Oregon's about the only other obstacle that they'll have that's, there. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. 
Number 18, Bama taking on Mississippi State. Alabama ranked this year because SEC is in the, the toilet. So <laughs> they really are right stick with now. Bama on this. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Bama as well. Number 13, Virginia taking on Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's pretty good, but not good enough to be able to to shoot their way out of beating uh, Virginia in that pack, pack line. You can't handle the Tony Bennett factor. Yeah. That's what it always is. So, yeah, Virginia. Number six, Tennessee taking on number 19, Mizzou. Your Mizzou Tigers, I think they're going to pull out the upset. Tennessee got blown out by uh, Florida the other day. Yeah, uh, there's Tennessee, you don't really know what team's going to show up. And I like the way that Mizzou's playing. I like the, the fact that they go with that four-guard set sometimes. Uh, I'm going to go with Mizzou. Number one, Gonzaga taking on Pacific, wherever the hell that is. I'm going to go with it. I'm assuming somewhere on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm going to stick with the Zags, though, by 40. Yeah, the Zags, yeah, probably by 50. Yeah, so. Number 21, Oregon taking on Oregon State. I'm going to stick with Oregon on this one, as we just As mentioned. we alluded to, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, I'll go with Oregon as well. Number 22, Illinois taking on Michigan State. I think Tom Izzo is going to be able to handle uh, Illinois in this one. You know, I'm gonna stick with Illinois in this. Uh, like they, they've had, they've had a few kind of continuity problems, but uh, with in some losses. But I think they're gonna start to come together, and yeah, I'm gonna just go with Illinois in this one. Yep, just gotta stop the high low, and then they'll be able to. Work <laughs> right, with, with yeah, yeah. that's all. Tom <laughs> because, is guys. because no one's ever been able to stop that against him for the yeah. past t- 15 Tw- years. Yeah, 15, 20 years. Uh, number four, Iowa taking on Nebraska. Iowa's got that. Sorry, Iowa. Will Sorry, roll. Yes. Cornhusker fans. Yeah, yeah. Number 13, Virginia taking on Syracuse. Again, I don't think that Syracuse... I think Syracuse is good because it's a Jim Beheim team, but I don't think they have a... I can hit 23s right. and be able to beat Virginia. Yeah, good. kind of a tough schedule for them this yeah. week. And uh, and I think, yeah, Virginia's going to take this. Again, the Tony Bennett factor, I mean, he's got them... He always has them ready to play. Number 14, West by God, Virginia, taking on number 12, Texas Tech. This is, we uh, talked about this one mm-hmm. earlier. I'm going to stick with West Virginia. I think Bob Huggins is going to keep chuggins. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Texas Tech in this one. I, like I said, a Chris Beard coach team is always tough. Uh, this team, I mean, I'm telling you, they're, they're going to they're gonna push everyone in the Big 12 for, for that title. All right, moving to the NFL. Championship Sunday here. Oh man, you got the Packers taking on Tampa Bay. I'm going to go with the Tom Brady's, uh, even though Green or uh, even though the Packers are uh, favored by three. Sorry, I lost where my uh, my <laughs> eyes went there for a second. <laughs> I'm going to still stick with uh, Tampa Bay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. And and now if you're, if you're thinking that oh it's Tampa Bay they can't play in cold weather. Tom Brady was playing cold in cold weather for a living and every year before this. So and they, he went to Michigan. Yes, uh, there's there's nothing that's going to phase him on this. So uh, I'm going to go with with Tampa Bay in this one. I'm, I think Brady's going to be in, a, in the Super Bowl again. Bills versus Chiefs. Chiefs are favored by three. We talked about this earlier. I don't know. We we don't know how healthy Patrick Mahomes is, but we do know how healthy Josh all, Allen and company Josh, are. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to go with the Bills. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills as well. I mean, because you don't know, like we said, we don't know what lingering effects there could be, or if you know maybe something gets triggered and you know Henny ends up having to come in as backup again. So, uh, but Bills are playing as well as anyone right now. The Bills. All right, moving on to the NBA. We haven't uh, got gotten really into the NBA a whole lot we this year. We haven't, no. Yeah. So we'll see how we can do with this. <laughs> we'll try and land the plane. This is a very early season. It is. It's very it is. much like uh, like hockey, but uh, the NBA is a lot of fun to bet on. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think they're another week or two in, in it, but at the same time, yeah, it's let's go. All right, Bucks and Lakers. They play tonight. Bucks are favored by one. Bucks are playing at home, so I'll stick with the Bucks. Yeah, I, I agree on that assessment of it. Um, you know, if it were in uh, if it were in LA, I'd go the other way. But yeah, the uh, Bucks at home. Yeah, if they were in LA, I'd, I'd say Lakers by forty. But <laughs> <laughs> Pelicans taking on the Jazz. Jazz are favored by seven. Go ahead and stick with my boy Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the Jazz. That's a pretty solid squad they have over there. Knicks and Warriors play tonight. Warriors favored by four and a half. Knicks haven't been good in like forty years, so I'll, I'll stick with the Warriors. Knicks actually aren't too shabby this this season, but at the same time, I'm going to go with uh, Warriors in this one as uh, as Steph Curry. I mean, he's looking like the Steph Curry of old. (laughs) By old, I mean like of like two seasons ago. Yeah. (laughs) All right, moving to Friday, the Bulls are taking on the Hornets. I'm going to go with the Bulls. Billy Donovan's there now. He's starting to work his way around with uh, 
with uh, Levine, Zach Levine, and I think they got something going on there. I, I see. I thought this was kind of a toss up. I, I'm gonna go with the Hornets just because. I, I mean, I was like, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what the, what type of team they have. They made that went out and made the trade for Gordon Hayward, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'll take Hornets in this one. All right, Rockets versus Pistons. So I'm going to go with the Rockets on this one, even though both teams are pretty bad. Both now. teams are just not good now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's a kind of a match, one of those matchups. I'm going to go stick with uh, the Rockets. Magic versus Pacers. I think the Pacers are going to race through it. Yeah. Andy Car, Andy Car joke there. I, I, yeah. I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go with the uh, Pacers. Uh, the, the, I, it seems that every time I pick against them, they always win, so I'm just going to have to pick them now. That's why I am, too, because I usually want to want to go against them because they're in Indiana. Yeah, right. Yeah, My, my disdain for Indiana sure. <laughs> shows through. Uh, Nets versus Cavs. Nets all the way, man. No, oh, Nets, easy, yeah. It's going to be a really good year for the Nets. Yes, it will. Barring uh, any more injuries. Yeah, right. As long as they stay healthy, Nets are going to have a great year. 76ers and Celtics play. 76ers are playing some good basketball already. They are. I'm going to stick with them. They are. But I'm going to go with Boston in this one. I still like Boston squad, even though you know they lost it. They, they lost Hayward. But at the same time, I, I don't know. It's tough for me to pick against them in this one. Heat versus Raptors. I'm going to go with the Heat on this one for really no reason. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go with the Heat on uh, this one. It's, I think it's going to be similar to last year. They're going to kind of just stick around in the lower part of that conference, and then at the end, they're going to fire it up. Timberwolves versus Hawks. I'm going to stick with the Wolves on that one. I don't think the the Hawks really have a whole lot going on for them right now. I mean, now. neither to the T-Wolves right now. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go with the Hawks on this one. All right, Spurs versus Mavs. You know, stick with the Spurs. You can't. It's really hard to to go against the Spurs at any moment, even right. though that they're kind of rebuilding. Yeah, uh, and, and and they are. But I mean, uh, yeah, I'll, I'm I'm gonna stick with the Spurs in this one. Suns and Nuggets. I'm gonna stick with the Nuggets. Due oh. to proximity, and <laughs> look at you. <laughs> you don't want to get rode out of town. Yeah, well, now, that and that and I have a hard time. I mean, look, the thing is with with Phoenix is every year. They get a high draft pick, and every year they draft a Kentucky player that usually doesn't do anything. They've just got like a squad full of UK players. Well, uh, you know, Devin Booker's... and not the good UK players. They don't get the good ones. They get like the the ones that are like, all right, this should be a good prospect, and then they end up just hanging out forever. Are you done with your anti University of Kentucky rant? I am. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go with the Suns in, in this one. Uh, although, you know, they do play the Nuggets later on this week, this weekend, that is. And uh, so I think these two teams are going to split. So anyway. All right. The Clippers and the Thunder play. I'm going to go with the uh, the Clippers on this one. Yeah, I'll go with Clippers. Clippers are playing well right now at the tops in the West. So yeah, Clippers. Uh, the Knicks and the Kings play on Friday as well. Um, I'm going to say turn the TV off and just stare at a blink screen rather than watching this game, but I figured the Knicks will pull that I, one out. I'm telling you, don't sleep on the Knicks this season. They're going to be in the, at least in the thick of things, so, so a chance at the playoffs. So I'm going to go with the Knicks. All right, 76ers and Pistons. I'm going to go 76ers because, again, they're good. Yes, 76ers are, are really tough this year, and uh, yeah, that, they should win that one pretty easy. All right, the Heat take on the Nets. Yeah, stick with the Nets. Yeah, Nets. See, Lakers versus Bulls. I'm kind of interested in this one solely because I think that Billy Donovan is going to put together a good Bulls team with everything he has, but I'm going to stick with the Lakers. In this. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the Lakers. I mean, I, I think that his squad's still going to have a tough time trying to defend Braun and AD. It depends on if they play them at all, too, because it's also the NBA where they like to rest players. That is true. So we'll Lo- see. Load management. We'll, we'll find out. Timberwolves and Pelicans play. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Timberwolves. I'm going to go with Zion Williamson in this one. That's that's what I'm picking. It's not the Pelicans. It's Zion Williamson. Every every time I pick him to win, anyway. Uh, so yeah, Pelicans. All right, the Rockets and the Mavs. So I I honestly had no idea who to pick on this. So I just went with the Mavs. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just going to go with the Mavs on this one. Like, Porzingis I mean, is good. I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm just going to go with the Mavs because <laughs> the Rockets just are they're struggling. All right, the Jazz take on the Warriors. I'm going to stick with the Jazz. I'm going to go with the Warriors on this one. Yeah, the you know, like I said, Steph Curry's back. Yes, I know he's missing Clay, and we all know he's missing Clay Thompson this year. But uh, at the same time, he is looking like the Steph Curry of two years ago. Yeah, uh, Rudy Gobert got paid, so I mean, 
that gives him enough uh, incentive to to want to go. So I'm thinking yeah. of that and Donovan Mitchell, who also got paid. We'll so, see. That, that'll be that'll be yeah. a good matchup. Yeah. So. And finally, the Nuggets and the Suns. I'm going to stick with the Nuggets again because. <laughs> <laughs> just because. Just because. <laughs> As I mentioned, I picked those two teams to split this weekend, so the Nuggets in, in that one. All right, that is going to do it for us. We uh, have rounded off another fantastic week of sports that we have coming up, which is, I mean, you can do like me. Just don't uh, actually move into your house. Just have all the crap sitting in the living room and plug in two TVs and uh, watch two games at once. Or you could be me, just you know, Uber to the bar and back, and you know, be there for your entire day, basically. So, yeah. so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to save money, go my way. But yeah. yeah. We're also on social media at pregame Matt Jax and Matt only has one T. Yep. We'll catch you next week. You just listen to the pregame with Matt and Jax.